What's up fam, before we officially get into this review, I want to say I know people have been um, reaching out wanting to uh, get their uh, Team on these shirts, so I've already started the campaign. You guys have until September 13th to uh, pretty much uh, purchase it. So the way it works is you go to teespring.com slash Team on these, purchase the shirt, they're $14. Like I said, if you guys are wondering about, you know, profit margins, the shirt costs $13.75 to make, so really not making anything off of it. And uh, I picked seven shirts to be made because I wasn't sure about how many people would want it. And what's going to happen is at the end of the campaign, so in like, two, I think it's three weeks? Approximately two to three weeks, whenever, well, whenever September 14th is, like once the campaign is over is when the shirts will go out. And that will pretty much, and like I said, we'll still have time for the show. The only difference is instead of them being blue, I picked white. The whole thing is I was trying to make it that these uh, shirts would be budget friendly. Again, I'm not trying to come up on this, but I know people wanted the shirt, so I thought this was the uh, most beneficial way to do it. So hopefully it works, and like I said, if you guys want, like I said, the link will be down below, and yeah, other than that, let's get into this fucking review. All right, so it starts off. First and foremost, can I don't know if y'all caught it, but I did not see the cockroach on the intro. I don't know what it was. I don't know. I it could be, it very well could be the fact that he been going ham on Nia on social media, but he is not in the fucking intro. Does this mean we gotta see his ass no more? Oh, I fucking hope so. Um, so Shonda Willie on the beach, uh, trying to figure out how the fuck they gonna make this shit work. She telling him pretty much that hey bro you gotta figure this shit out you gotta work at it while you doing that i'm working my music right and you know he's pretty much telling her you know okay he promises that he's gonna do right and she's pretty much telling him you know you better my only thing with that is shonda for <laughs> part of me thinks this is real a big part of me don't i feel like it's a part of me wants all right let me not even do that anyway <laughs> But what I'm saying is, like, she's making it too fucking easy. You know, it's one of those where shit like this, you got, I'm just saying, you got to make this shit hurt just a little bit. You know, so it's a reminder in the back of their head, like, hey, we ain't going to do this. You you do this shit again, you whatever. I ain't married, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, obviously. But now we got Brandy and Princess, so the money that um, Brandy took away from her son, it's for a fucking storefront. So she and this other female, who name really is significant, just like Brandy, uh, they have an online store, and they wanted a storefront. So she took this money to go have on this store. My God, there's an awesome God that shades from above. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Pray. And she calls our uh, princess down there, and let her know, hey, this is what it is. Oh, also, you've been my alibi. And Prince is kind of like, oh fuck, now. I didn't want to take a moment because I was trying to be nice and not speak about it, but because I know that I got to go in on uh, Fizz, I might as well go ahead and uh, go in on uh, this big mouth chihuahua ass motherfucking name, Brandy. Now, here's the issue that I have. So we want to sit here and talk about somebody's parenting skills or lack thereof. Um, On the uh, reunion of season two, uh, first and foremost, let's make it perfectly clear that you really don't have a fucking storyline. And once this is over, what storyline will you have? But you were trying your best to have a storyline with Moniz until she fucking paid you dust. And the same exact motherfucker you're trying to have a storyline with, the same individual you sit here trying to call an ain't shit mama. What the fuck does that make you if you sit here taking money that is meant for your child's future to go into a trust fund, savings account, whatever the fuck it is, to accrue interest over time to secure your child's future, where if that money is invested and y'all never touch it, even if y'all, meaning her and her husband, are flat fucking broke, your child still has a future. So if anybody here is an ain't shit parent, it's one, I mean, guy, I got it. It's one thing to be MIA and you know come to and from as you fucking please. And you know what? That's one thing to explain to a child. It's another thing to sit here and say, oh, I love you so much, but I stole from you. I stole what was meant to be yours to sit here and feed my selfish desires. But we want to sit here and call Moniz an ancient motherfucking parent? I think not. But anyway, 
I'm gonna save all my energy for Fizz ass. I'm gonna save all my fucking energy for that. For, okay. Entiway. We got this girl named Lyrica Anderson. I, she has a boyfriend named A1. So she's a songwriter, apparently. She wrote for Beyonce, J Hud, and she did song on Chris Brown shit. I'm gonna say her voice was very fucking nasally. Uh, nasally fucking singing was dead in the early 2000s, okay? I, that shit was dead. I think Ashanti was the last one we accepted nasally singing from. Well, what the fuck ever. She's doing a video. I think it's the song name was The Whole Team. I don't fucking remember. I rewinded one time and I didn't want to do it again. Y'all let y'all get me together down there. Let me know what it was in the comment section. Um, so, A1's mom lives with him. And it went from two weeks to like six months. So he got her a place. Uh, Lyrica's happy. They're talking about moms. He's pretty much saying, girl, your mama ain't the fuck. No. He was talking about how bad her mom is. She said, your mom is an angel too. She has like a little showcase thing of magic going on. He's pretty much saying, no moms, but she's probably going to end up bringing her mom. All right. And that's it for right now. All right. Y'all got to see me. I'm sitting here trying to, you know, feed my face and shit. It's natural. We, we do it, you know. We do eat off camera and shit. <laughs> but, um... Ray J. Moe needs talking about prenup talk. Don't care. She wants to take care of the girls take, talking shit about her. Ray J. said her, like, hey, leave this shit alone. You feel what I'm saying? Like, leave this shit alone. Because, I mean, real talk, it's like a fucking fire. You feel what I'm saying? You know, it needs... Fuck, what is it? I... It needs certain things to exist, and it was in my head, and I can't fucking remember the things that it needs, but at the same exact time, it needs oxygen, among some other shit, but, at the, but also with that, you can feel the fucking fire, you know what I'm saying, so you feeding into it is, it, is only going to make it grow larger, once you stop adding fuel to it, and once there's nothing there, it is, once there's no, uh, no source for the fire to burn, the shit will go out. But unless you continue to fan the flames, throw shit on there for it to burn, and continue to put live fluid on it, the shit gonna keep going. You feel what I'm saying? And honestly, you give a motherfucker a stage, they will perform. So if you continue to feed into some shit, you know, it's only gonna make that person continue to cut, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, mind you, when you stop feeding into it, granted, yes, a person gonna stop when they get ready. But when they realize, like, damn, I'm not even getting the arousal out of this motherfucker. They will stop, right? So I'm just I'm just gonna throw it out there. But Ray J pretty much tell her just like, hey, the shit does. She don't want to. So Ray J brings up. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Ray J brings up Brandy. Princess tells it all. Like I'm gonna let y'all know, right? I couldn't fuck with. I couldn't fuck with bitch like Princess. Why? Cause she she snitching. She sn it's one thing if you go snitch in the cameras. You snitching in the cameras there. You snitching. Then she go promise him the secrecy. What the fuck? We Moving on. Moving on. But Ray J said he ain't no snitch. Plastic says she talking to two people. And, you know, she's talking about double standard, this, that, third, real talk, there really is, okay, there's somewhat is double standard, but not really, but at the same exact time, the issue that she, that I see, I foresee, is, first and foremost, general, just for everybody, if you are single, define in your head, you know, what it is to date, and all this other stuff, because for me personally, to date means that I'm not tied to anybody, so I can date you, 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 and you, and I don't have to tell y'all about each other because we're dating. I'm not committed to none of y'all. And just as I can date all of y'all, y'all can date whomever the fuck y'all want to date. You feel what I'm saying? But it's how do you define dating? Is there sexual intercourse or dating all this other stuff? For me, it's not. I mean, for those of y'all who watch me for the first time or who's new to my channel, shit, I've been celibate for 15 fucking years, so we ain't even got to fucking worry about that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Now, if that's what the fuck you do, that's what the fuck you do. But for me, I can date whomever the fuck I want to. Now, once I, once I decide, okay... You the one, okay, now that I'm claiming you, now we're in a relationship, everybody else ceases to exist. You know what I'm saying? But that's what you have to define at the same exact time. You got to be forthcoming with that, you know, first, some people can't do it the first date, second, third date. You know what I'm saying? But you got some people where uh, we date and we in a relationship. That's why I say first date. Y'all put that shit out there so y'all, everybody on the same motherfucking page. You know what I'm saying? But I don't give a fuck about her damn storyline. Now, Moniz and Princess talk. Moniz's whole thing, well, actually, before he even start, Princess goes in. So, right there, 
you have already set the tone. Moniz is just kind of looking at her. It's kind of looking at her like, "Bitch, are you are you done? Are you through? Are we finished? Like, why? What's going on?" And she says, "All of this started when you talked about my son." Now, Prince's whole thing: you can't keep using it as a crutch. What I will say is, I think you can, because I'm one of them where it's certain people in my life that are off limits. You feel what I'm saying? Grand, I, and I'm gonna just be, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but some shit happened in my family. Something involving my brother. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody else then forgave the other person, or they continue on with life as if the shit never happened. Not me. Everybody in my family know that bitch that did what the fuck she did to my brother. That bitch dead to me. Fucking dead to me. It, it, it ain't shit else that fucking need to be said. Not nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Shit. You sit here and talk about my nieces and whatnot. We re it really ain't no coming back from that because I don't have kids. So my nieces and my nephew, I like my fucking kids. So for me, you got shit to say about them. We pro we gonna have a motherfucking problem. For real, for real. You feel what I'm saying? So and this is me and I have an emotional attachment to my fucking niece and my nephew. And again, with my fucking brothers and whatnot, I can talk the utmost shit about them. But you better not fucking do it. Not peer. So I understand it from this standpoint. Now, for those of y'all who have children, y'all let me know. Like, if a motherfucker sit here and start talking shit on your child on how you raise your child, like, are you quick to get over that? Because I think if I had children, I wouldn't. But that's just me. You feel what I'm saying? But her whole thing is you can't use it as a fucking excuse. And Monique's pretty much saying like, you know what? I I'm sorry. I apologize. Now. I think it was one of those, you know what, I'm going to just apologize so we can sit here and dead this situation. You know what I'm saying? Prince's whole thing is, no, it ain't even happening. And she tries to run up on Moniz. I know some people will say some Moniz didn't do shit because security was right there. Moniz didn't fucking flinch. And again, I will say to y'all, if this shit was serious with Princess, Princess had many different opportunities to get at Moniz. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was season one reunion that Ray J sicked Princess on, I think, Megan, Morgan, whoever the fuck it was, like, go get her. And she charged like she was a fucking doll being obedient to her fucking master. So with that being said, if you really want to get up at Moniz, you would have got up on these a long motherfucking time ago. But it's convenient that, oh, since she has my name, miss me with the bullshit. Just, just fucking miss me with it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Alright, so we got Lyrica performing, and um, you have A1 in the audience, Tierra Marie, but you know, she's just there, so whatever. And you also have her mom, so her mom is also named Lyrica, so we're just gonna say Lyrica G. Now, the crazy thing is, you can hear that the mom's has pipes on her. It's to the point where. She pretty much is upstage with her daughter from, you know, uh, in the audience. So, old girl get off stage. And the mom's just like, you know, you did good. But, you know, you probably should be showing off your body a little bit more. You know, it's nice. It's all right. But, <laughs> hey, it is what it is, you know. And A1 feels some kind of way. Because it's like, well, damn, you could have just said it. It was okay. You know, this, that, and the third. And her whole thing. And it's one of those where her mom has been in the business. And... I would assume she has sung background. I'm not sure. But he had even made mention to the mom that the producers thought, I'm sorry, the execs that are there thought that you were a background singer. And she pretty much told him, you call me a background singer one more time, you're going to have a problem for me and it's not going to go away anytime soon. But to even say there's nothing wrong with being a background singer, because one thing that people feel to realize is it's actually harder to be a background singer than it is to, you know, be frontlining. Because being a background singer, you have to sit pretty much be on key with other people in sync the entire time. Where if you're just out there, you can sit here and be off, you know what I'm saying? But if you're on key and the background people are off, it just fucks up the whole entire fucking show. So, I mean, it's just like, think about a choir. You know, the choir can be, like I said, you might have that one person get out there and blow, but if that choir be off, it's a fucking problem. You know what I'm saying? But I will say the mom does come off as being somewhat abrasive but you can tell that it's coming from a good place and she only wants the best for her daughter because she even said that you were doing good but i wanted you to take it there and i know some of y'all done heard some music where you where you vibe into it and you know somebody is like they go better yet a good example don't kill me kelly Rowland. kelly Rowland. i i think it was bad habit off the destiny's fulfilled album 
where I was I was really wanting her like really take it to take that and take it was that Lazarus like take it there and she didn't really take it there and I was just like ah you dropped it oh a lot of times she'll be performing live and she it's like you can tell that she purposely will cut the note off you know what I'm saying it's like ours like that was like you be wanting them to just give you just a little bit more you always love just like uh. so I, I got it I got it and then you got Max and Ray J so Max is putting together a compilation album and he has Ray J on there doing a song we'll talk about in a second he also wants Willie on there pretty much it's one of those where hey let's all get on this so we all can eat and you know I'm cool with that I'm cool with that now Ray J is doing this song called Cheat you know trying to persuade a female to cheat on her respective dude with you and I'm sitting here like motherfucker are you trying to sit here and give us boyfriend number two you know 2016 I think Pleasure Pete had already been there done that but oh, okay alright we'll, we'll see what happens and they start talking about well Ashley Mass was talking about his girl problem what not Ray J said hey it is what it is Princess said she only been you know she only hung out once with her so Max want to go on a motherfucking mission to see what's going on so we gonna see <laughs> Woo! alright okay alright first <laughs> let's go I swear I want to save this shit for the fucking end, but I'm gonna give it to y'all in order. So you have Princess and Brandy at a store um, looking at a competition. Ray J brings Max there. Now, of course, Brandy is shocked, and Princess is like, "What the fuck?" And then you got <laughs> you got Ray J being shady and shit. You know what, what the fuck did he say? You know. With everything look original and all this other shit and Prince is looking like no nigga no <laughs> so they fucking leave and you know Max ain't done you know looking into this shit I really do think this is truly just comic relief I hope so cause I can't She's. A, I've already lost respect for Brandy cause you don't sit here and take from your motherfucking kids you just don't fucking do that you supposed to go with that you know what well, let me not let me not anyway <laughs> but Princess revealed that I told Ray and she was like, well, I can't. And now, Brandy said in her confession that she cannot trust Princess with shit else. No other fucking secrets. My whole thing is you don't know the bitch from Adam. You feel what I'm saying? If anything, look, Brandy probably knows Brandy Norwood. Okay. Alright. Made for TV friendships and shit. But uh, Princess tells Brandon, you might want to tell your husband. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get to to Fizz. My shoes and relax my feet. Hit a seat and grab a bitch to read. <laughs> yes, read. All right. He did try me. He tried me when he tried her. So first and foremost, let, let, let's get one thing straight. When your ass is living with somebody else, there's something called fucking decorum. There is a certain way that you talk to someone. You feel what I'm saying? That you're living with. Okay, you don't dare sit here and get loud with that fucking person. I'm glad he was moving the fuck out as this fucking conversation happened. But he said some things. And it really got under my skin, so we gonna sit here, cause like I said, I'm I'm about to get this ass smooth all the way the fuck together, cause the whole entire time I was fucking watching this, I'm just like, really, nigga, really. So first, he wanna sit and talk about some. You are fucking up my relationship, talking about you wanna have another baby by me. Never, it'll never happen. Yeah, yeah, blah blah, rah rah. Okay, okay. The, de the delivery was fucked up one but then he was just like cause you're fucking up my relationships by doing that now she clocked his ass about like well Nikki said y'all wasn't even a fucking unit he was like well it don't matter if the shit was gonna happen so right there you fucking in the words of James Cole backpedaling the pussy poppy that's what the fuck you doing right there and he's sitting there talking about so you don't t pretty much you don't say shit to anybody that I'm fucking dating you feel what I'm saying? Because it's, it's almost like you're doing that with the intent of breaking up my fucking relationship, right? So, so, let's bag it on up. Let's go to fucking season two. Let's go towards the ending part of season two. Now, yes, Moniz was wrong for confessing her feelings to, you know, Andrea about how the fuck she was feeling about his ass. Okay, got it. She was wrong. 
he went and had pillow talk with nigga. Now you finna have pillow talk with a bitch that don't really fucking get along with your baby mama and you really think and she also knows her fucking boyfriend who is rich. Now we we gonna sit here and we gonna forget about the fact that Rich trying to find a way out, but you pretty much told her and you had to know in the back of your fucking mind that she was gonna go and say something to Rich. So and I, I was hoping Monice would have held his ass to the fire on that shit, but you could tell she was just beyond through just looking at him like, nigga, just get your shit and go. But uh, so, so that was the first thing, okay? Second thing is, you know, what the fuck did he say? You know, you know I forgot what the fuck he said, but then he went ahead and said some shit about, you know, her talking about who she's fucking and it being put out there, you know, for. You know his son, because he started saying there, but then he started to claim it as pr pretty much low key saying you ain't shit ever fucking parent. Because I'm about to get this ass all the way fucking get talking about. So I'm trying to protect my child because you need to consider, you know, my ch now. Here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> it's only so many times Moni's finna be an ain't shit motherfucking parent. Okay, because right quick, who is the stable fucking parent? Who has a place for the child to fucking say? Because if she wanted to, she could have easily took this ass to court talking about some, well, for him to sit here and be a fucking breadwinner and for it to be a fucking ghastly, he ain't have no type of money to sit here and do a three month. Because you can work out a, well, not really a three month. If you know people, you can work out a three month, possibly a six month, but you couldn't do a nine month lease. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't rent a place for nine months. You couldn't rent a place for motherfucking 12 months while this shit was going on. You couldn't do none of this motherfucking shit. You couldn't even, you couldn't do none of this shit, nigga. But you want to say it come for her, but she has the same fucking place. Apparently, she is doing something. Here's the thing. You got this lotion line that we don't know nothing about, but we know she got fucking dildos and shit. We know she got money. We know she getting paid. We don't know if you necessarily fucking get paid. I'm just saying. But you want to sit here and come for her, and then you want to sit talking about, you want to sit here and try to say she got bodies. Here's the thing, bro. Let's be fucking honest. To our fucking knowledge. If I'm not mistaken, y'all can get me together. I don't think Rich ever met her son. And if it and if he if he did, it was fucking brief. But you wanna sit here and talk to her about considering y'all fucking son when you are his fucking idol. He will look to you as to what it is to be a fucking man. And the fact that we have seen your ass with three bitches. Fuck this season. Three bitches in two fucking seasons, and one of them bitches happened to be a fucking appetizer to your motherfucking ass. And you didn't have, and you the first one you didn't have in your house with your child, and she ain't really giving a fuck about your motherfucking kid. She ain't give a fuck about you because she's sitting around here having dates with an old motherfucker. Why the fuck she with you? But she didn't got close to your motherfucking son. You got a motherfucking appetizer living in your motherfucking house. Pretty shit, she didn't see your motherfucking son. Then you got nigga baby with her motherfucking plastic ass. I done call her nigga baby. That's probably gonna be the first and last time I fucking say that. But have her fucking nasty plastic motherfucking molded ass sitting on your motherfucking guy. And I'm pretty sure she didn't see your motherfucking child. So you wanna sit here and say, trying to pretty much paint her as an ain't shit parent. When nigga, you the motherfucking ain't shit parent, bruh. Ex I, for real, for real. That's what the fuck we finna do. On some real shit, he needs to really sew his ass the fuck down. And on, and I would, Moniz, if you ever fucking watching this, everything that I just fucking said, use this shit, take that nigga to court. Show his ass. Get hit the ass with a fucking fucking counts. Gut punch that ass. Fuck that. Fire to the scalps. Watch it burns as I get my life. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this is the end and please forgive me because I'm a Alright <laughs> So you got Lyrica A1 have a little uh I guess we could say net chick simplet Netflix and chill and uh Pam walks in um talking about she gonna make dinner making noise I think part of this was put on for the fucking camera because it's one of those where you know Lyrica sucking on her breath making it obvious that there's an issue so that already sparks, you know, talks between the mom and her. Long story short, they get to going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, A1 is attempting to, you know, calm the situation, but it doesn't work. And what I'm going to say is, you know, hey, Fantasia said the best, if you're going to be the man, to be the man. You feel what I'm saying? Now, it's one of those where, let's just call a fucking spade a spade. Yes, that is your mother. 
and there is a certain level of respect but if your name and her name and i'm talking about lyrica is on the lease then of course as i said before when i was talking about andrea there's a certain amount of decorum that needs to be had and a certain level of respect and that's one of those where you know personally he should have checked both days it should have been one of those where hey that's mom's if you got an issue it is what it is but you not finna come at her like that by the same exact time mom's this you know what i'm saying it's one but it's a situation that he didn't cause and it's one of those where i guess bro you should have saw this shit before it even got to that motherfucking point but hey i don't know i'm just waiting for next week when the shit really blow up and then then you got the fucking store opening now you got brandy you know talking to the guests and whatnot Ray J and Princess come in and kind of look at her like you ain't tell the motherfucker yet all oh, shit so he gonna come and, and conveniently he comes in while she's giving I guess she's at the tail end of her speech and he's just like what it what you know what it do what it is now where she fucked up is the conversation that they had they had it in the store I'm assuming that they like the acoustics in that bitch is on fucking point cause everybody Either she, either they were talking loud, or the acoustics was great. Cause everybody was just like, "Oh shit, what bitch? What? What? The, what?" Like that's what they were fucking doing. And when he found out where the, like, cause she was like, "Well, this is our store. Half of it is ours." He's like, "The fuck? How we get that?" And when she revealed where the money came from, he was pissed. He, he I mean, I'm not gonna say he threw a fit, but he was mad. I'll be mad too. And he was just like, "I know you're not talking about my son's money." You know what I'm saying? And then he's getting mad. He's just like, when have I ever told you no? You could have easily just asked me for it and I would have gave it to you. But the fact that you took from my son ain't shit, motherfucking parent. You know, like, he was beyond dude. She gets in the car. And then we have, now we are replaying season two. When she got her ass in front. Well, actually, she got on the car this time. He pretty much told her, you want to get locked the fuck up? <laughs> get off my car. And so then she gets in front of the car. But instead of him going to reverse... I guess she felt the mother was moving, so she got out the way, and then she jumping up and down, crying, screaming, all of the shit, you know, making all that motherfucking noise in the white people neighborhood and shit, and she just as bad as Amber, except for Amber's rolling around on the motherfucking people's grass and shit, I don't fucking know, and that's all that happened, so thank you guys for watching, hopefully I have entertained y'all for this duration, and hopefully I don't have to sit here and give y'all a long video like this for the rest of the season until we get to the reunion, so thank you for watching. Again, if you want a t-shirt, just go to the link down in the description. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys, yeah, next week for uh, another review. Peace.